Fukushima, it's really starting to devastate a lot of different areas in the Pacific. When you look at the bottom part of the Baja, California, right at the tip of the Baja where these dolphins died, about 22 of them. So it's going to be a little graphic. If you don't like that, you might want to just skip forward ahead about a minute. Dolphins, turtles, and sea lions appear dead in Mexico Beach. The bodies of 21 dolphins, turtles, and 11 sea lions were located in an island in the northwest of Mexico, which led to the deployment of experts to conduct an investigation reported Thursday by the Federal Attorney for Environmental Protection, the PROFIPA. The animals were found in the Altamaria Islands, Santa Maria Bay, in the Gulf of California. The inspectors, rangers, and specialists moved to examine the 42 kilometers of coastline, explaining a statement from the Profipa. Wow. Experts, they call this an extraordinary event consisting of the stranding of marine organisms in order to explain the cause, he adds. They will also discuss the condition, the age, the health status, and the presence of trauma or injury in animals, and may perform a necropsy and sampling of tissue and organs. Now, if you've just been following Noah, they even came on and said, look, Alaska is going to be hot. It's going to be warmed up. And, you know, a lot of that heat's going to be coming from the blob, a.k.a. Fukushima radiation. So there was a bunch of animal deaths up on this point, and if you just look at the way the Alaska is, it's just kind of like a bowl. It's going to be like a funnel, so there's going to be a lot of contamination, I believe, in these fish up here. A lot of animal strandings, a lot of whales has died up in this area. So over here in the, the Kachemek Bay, we had uh, a bunch of animal fatalities. The sea otter deaths are under investigation, and authorities are seeking the public's help. Scientists continue to see large numbers of dead or sick sea otters turning up in the Kachemek Bay region. Officials with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service say the agency has received about 200 reports of sick or dead otters over the past couple months. They've teamed up with the Alaska Sea Life Center and they're running tests to try and find out the cause. In the meantime, they're asking for the public's help. It's Friday night, and Mark Weber with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and Homer has already had two calls for sick otters. Well, I was just out on the spit having dinner with my family, and a call came in. I was coming into the station of two others outside. Weber is part of a group trained to respond to sick and injured marine mammals. He's a deputy refugee manager for the Alaskan Maritime National Wildlife Refuge, which runs the Alaska Islands and the Ocean Visitor Center in Homer. And so I was able to get one of them down there below them rocks there while around the spitting road and the individual in a very bad shape, Weber said. It is in somewhat a depleted condition, but demonstrating something we've also seen a little bit of which instead of a neurological condition, which is twitching. That's right, twitching. The otters are having seizures. Seizures. Weber and trained volunteers try to keep people away from sick otters and get a vet to euthanize them when necessary. That's right. So when we start twitching and with the new Obamacare, they're going to start euthanizing us. We're finding otters all over the Homer area, he said. They're found from our Bishop Beach all the way around the spit on both sides and around the shores of Mud Bay, so it's pretty widespread. Otters play an important role in their ecosystem, Weber notes, so when something is going wrong with them, something is likely to affect the entire ecosystem. Otters were nearly hunted to extinction during the fur trade of the 1700s and 1800s and suffered again after the Exxon Valdez oil spill. So they tell you about Exxon Valdez, they tell you about the hunting, but they did not say one word about Fukushima radiation. Kerry Gortiz is a veterinarian with the Alaska Sea Life Center in Seward. She's been examining sick otters. 
This summer started off fairly typical with a couple of otter carcasses of other carcasses being found every week. However, as the summer went into August and September, we were getting up to over 20 carcasses or morbid animals each week. And in those animals that we've seen different presentations. That's right, because there's different radioactive elements and they're all going to kill us differently. She says they've been tracking a streptopicus illness in Kachemek Bay area otters for some time and those otters usually appear sickly and emaciated but the otters that have died since August seem different. They died acutely and that has become more common in the what we're seeing in the last couple of months. So they're saying over time the, the latest steps that they've been seeing they've been more grotesque, they've been more obscene, they've been more crazy, they've been more mutated. If you see a beach live otter a dead one Officials want to know. They're asking people to call the Alaska Sea Life Center Strand Marine Mammal Hotline. They say the otter shouldn't be approached because of the strep related illness can be passed to humans. Dogs should also be restrained as the illness can be passed to them as well. In addition, a sick otter could get defensive. Mm, they probably don't want you to take pictures either. Weber with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Department and Homer Simpson says he's responded to around 50 calls for dead and dying otters over the past couple months. And what he's seeing seems different than what he's seen in the past. Something is hitting them harder and faster. In addition to the disease that we're familiar with seeing, something else seems to be involved. Something. That's just speculation. We don't have any evidence. But what we're seeing on the beach. Something, something is hitting them harder and faster. Something seems to be involved. Something, we don't have any evidence yet, but what we're seeing is something. There used to be huge salmon runs in this area, and it's down 98% from where it was even just a few years ago. I'm just going to jump into that story real quick. Nanak Fisherman Cope with Slow Opener was making many people in the industry restless. Now, people are believing it's just all the temperature that's killing everything or it's keeping the fish away or they're hiding somewhere. And, you know, supposedly they're not too nervous about it. They think the fish are going to come back. And these fishermen, they're just twiddling their thumbs, bored out of their minds. Trumper believes a warm temperature of 5 degrees warmer than usual in the rivers is keeping the fish away in the colder bay waters. As soon as the rivers cool, he predicts the salmon are going to come all at once. Up and down the main road in Neck Neck, canary workers were also getting restless. As employees of the North Pacific Seafoods Red Salmon said many workers were frustrated. I've never been here this long and had this much downtime, said returning worker. Whatever the reason for the delay, wind, mud, temperature, or all the above, Many people are waiting in neck neck were speculating about a wall of salmon when it will finally hit could plug up nets and processors alike. Yeah, keep those nets ready. You'll be using those nets to catch those TEPCO officials and the people that put up with that garbage.